in a bid to set a strategic direction for the seventh governing board of the Niger Delta Development Commission and inspired by the desire to consolidate Mr. President's renewed hope agenda within the Niger Delta region, the NDDC convened a two-day board and management retreat at Four Points by Sheraton Hotel, Iko Depene, Akwaibom State, from Friday the 9th to Saturday the 10th of February 2024, with the theme, Renewed Hope, a new era for vitality, peace and development. This gathering is a reflection of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's strong desire to have the Niger Delta region transformed into a zone of peace and development. This accession is predicated on the fact that the governing board of the Niger Delta Development Commission, led by my humble self and comprised of other worthy Nigerians, was among the first federal government parastatal constituted by Mr. President upon his assumption of office last year. Since our inauguration just over two months ago, as a highly accountable and proactive board, we have achieved progress. Together, we have worked to dispel the negative narratives that once plagued the Commission, aiming to make that a thing of the past. We have adopted a leadership style that aims to instill confidence in our people, prioritizing their well-being through constructive collaboration and mutual respect. The objective of this retreat is to further align the board and management of the Commission with Mr. President's renewed hope agenda. I'm particularly delighted by the presence of the eminent and knowledgeable resource persons drawn from diverse leadership and management backgrounds to anchor and critically dissect the various sub-themes in ways that will foster profound and enduring faith between the board and management of the commission. Therefore, as the retreat begins, it is important for us to make it rewarding by enthusiastically probing purportedly settled answers about the development of the Niger Delta while attempting answers to unsettled questions as well. Following a similar approach within this two-day retreat, we should propose strategies for the reintroduction and re-establishment of coordinated development to its proper place in the Niger Delta discourse. Design implementation ideas and ideals that will remind members of the board and management that we are confronted with a larger responsibility of nation building. At the end of this retreat, we should become aware that the main parameter for assessment as board members and management staff will largely be dependent on the way we discharge our fiduciary duties and the legacies we leave behind in terms of developing and improving of the region. This retreat presents us with the opportunity to interrogate and prescribe solutions in our corrective quest for sustainable development of the Niger Delta region. This, of course, has been emphasized by various speakers. The significance of a retreat as a platform in which management comes together to brainstorm, cross-pollinate ideas, and constantly chart new ways to strengthen and reposition the organization cannot be overemphasized. Hence, this occasion could not have come at a better time than now. It is a veritable opportunity to examine some of the factors that have militated against the collective and efficient operations of the Commission in the last few years. I'm aware that it is not the first time in a forum like this that the directors, deputy directors, and other critical officers of the Commission are gathered to deliberate on how to synergize for resource, resourceful progress. However, with the new board in place, I am more confident that we shall strike the right accord in our collective efforts to deliver on the mandate of the Commission towards the development of the Niger Delta region. The task before this new board shall include a faithful implementation of the recommendations of the report of the forensic audit in line with the President's Renew Hope agenda. If we must make any headway, in charting the desired roadmap for sustainable development of the region, all hands must be on deck with every courage it deserves to tackle those factors that have constituted a clog in the wheel of development programs and policies in the region. I therefore adjourn the new board and the management to collaborate with critical stakeholders 
in the Niger Delta region to overcome these observed challenges and attain our developmental goals. I challenge you, you go to most of the rural communities in the Niger Delta today, the only government presence you see in these communities is only NDDC project. That is to say, that is the only way the government has reached these people. But some of these projects were never commissioned. Most of these projects, NDDC did not make noise about them. NDDC did not tell its story, thereby allowing strangers to be telling the stories of NDDC. If you look at this record, you also agree that nobody will tag NDDC to be a failure. Most of our rural communities are now urban cities. The state capitals are also extending to rural communities. Hence, more is expected. So now we need to connect communities. And in connecting these communities, NDDC have done quite a few too. One of the landmark projects NDDC have also completed was, one of the, was the partnership between NDDC and SPDC in completing the Ogbia Nembe Road, which is about 27 kilometers long with about nine bridges all on swamp. That is also a very, very big success story of the NDDC. That project is yet to be commissioned. Recently, we had a discussion with the Honorable Minister, and the Honorable Minister have charged us to put the motion in place for the commissioning of that project. We decided to also come up with a term called the triple T. The triple T means transiting from transaction to transformation. Foundations have been built for the NDDC. We are now transiting from transaction to transformation. And in transiting from transaction to transformation, meaning anything we are doing must be sustainable. We are committed, but also we are begging you to look at the challenges we have as a commission. We can all sit down together, work it out, to ensure that the people of the Niger Delta are proud of NDDC, the people of the Niger Delta are proud of the ministry supervising NDDC, the people of the Niger Delta are proud of the legislators today that are oversighting NDDC, the people of the Niger Delta are proud of the staff of NDDC, and the people of the Niger Delta, let them be proud of the achievements we are going to make. Thank you very much. Following welcome remarks by the chairman of the governing board, an address by the Minister for Niger Delta Development, the MDCEO's address, other goodwill messages by key stakeholders, paper presentation by resource persons, review of presentations, question and answer sessions over the course of two days, the following general resolutions were reached. 1. A reviewed and updated Niger Delta Regional Development Master Plan remains a crucial framework for guiding and implementing development initiatives in the Niger Delta. 2. The federal government should ensure that the current board completes its tenure and that there is continuity in succeeding boards to ensure sustainability of the Commission's projects. 3. There is need for proper synergy, collaboration, and coordinating framework between the Ministry of Niger Delta Development, state governments in the region, the NDDC and development partners. Four, the board and management of the NDDC must effectively discharge their responsibility to manage the procurement process involving all stakeholders without sacrificing core objectives as provided under the Procurement Act. Five, there is need for urgent release of all outstanding statutory contributions of the federal government to the NDDC fund as the non-release of these funds has significantly hampered the ability of the Commission to deliver on its mandates. 6. There is need for some form of financial autonomy for the NDDC outside the Treasury single account regime. 7. There is need for the board and management to acquaint themselves with relevant rules in order to effectively discharge their responsibilities imposed under extant laws. 8. 
the Managing Director CEO, as the Chief Accounting Officer of the Commission, remains responsible for all procurement processes. 9. The Commission shall establish clear, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals that the Commission will demonstrably commit to and deliver upon, fostering increased public trust. 10. The leadership of the Commission needs to consistently demonstrate their commitment to ethical principles through their decisions and behavior. 11. There is need for development of key governance policies and procedures to promote clarity of roles and minimize discord on the board. 12. The main purpose of all reform must be the improvement of the lives of the people. 13. That there is need for intentional partnerships and conflict management imperatives to secure value. 14. There is need for strategic communication of the value added by the NDDC to its stakeholders to change the negative perception about the Commission. And 15. Although political pressure on the operations of the Commission exists, there is a need for the board and management of the Commission to develop the political will to manage this pressure. Thereafter, a performance bond was signed by the Ministry of Niger Delta Development and the NDDC. Indeed, the NDDC is making a difference in the Niger Delta through impactful programs and projects.